Hey guys, uh, Jesse here. Uh, so this video will be the second part to a three-part series looking at the process of gene expression from the VC biology course. If you haven't already seen uh, part one on the transcription process, I'd suggest that you check that out first. The link will be down below. So today we'll be looking at the post-transcriptional modification process. Uh, so firstly, why, uh, what is it and why does it happen? So the name sounds complicated, but if we actually break it down, we can see there's three parts to it. So post meaning after, transcriptional referring to transcription and modification meaning that changes are being made. So uh, ultimately it means that it's changes that we make to the mRNA after transcription, post transcriptional modification. So now the reason why we do this uh, is because a good chunk of our DNA is actually made up of junk DNA. From our entire genome, around about 98.5% is actually what's referred to as junk, meaning that it doesn't actually encode for protein. About 1.5 to 2% of it is actually going to encode for protein. So we need to kind of sift through a lot of this, right? So although transcription rewrites the entire gene into mRNA uh, language verbatim, there are bits that we don't really need, um, which make up some of that 98.5% that is junk. And some small changes we need to make uh, to its ends in order for it to proceed and be recognized by the ribosome in the third phase translation. So splicing is one of the three modifications that we'll look at. Um, it involves cutting out sections of mRNA called introns and keeping other chunks called exons. So think of it as the cell cutting down on the length of the instruction by just getting the gist of the instructions. In other words, the TLDR, so to speak. So genes are often written in very complicated and lengthy ways, uh, and only some sections contain the key instructions. So let's say I wrote this sentence out. Now, really all we need are these bits uh, to get the exact same message, but a whole lot more clearly. We can then remove these junk sections uh, representing introns and keep the juicier bits, right? And these are gonna be our exons. So you can now see that if we glue those exons together, um, we get a much clearer instruction. And there we go. So now we've spliced our mRNA. That's the only detail that you'll need for the VCE biology course. Uh, and then next up is the modifications of the ends of the mRNA molecule. So firstly, we'll uh, need to add protecting methyl caps to the three prime end of our molecule. So here we have a methyl cap, um, uh, in other words, a methyl group, and we attach that to the free ribose sugar to protect it. Remember that the three prime end of our mRNA molecule will have a free sugar and in mRNA that is the ribose sugar. Um, so it's kind of like one of those weird things on the ends of shoelaces uh, to protect them from fraying, little plastic caps. It's effectively doing that for you. Uh, and then the third and final part of modification is polyadenylation of the five prime end, which involves adding of a polyadenosine tail, often referred to as just the poly A tail for short. And it's literally just a bunch of adenosine molecules linked together. So we now have our full mature mRNA molecule with all the modifications ready to be translated by the ribosome. Cheers, guys.